So your warm-up is reminding you about laws of exponents, okay? Laws of exponents. When I have two bases that are the same and I want to multiply them together, what do I get to do with my exponents? I get to add them together. So this is 2 raised to the 6 plus 8, which is just 2 to the 14, right? Like that. Okay? We're going to leave it there for now. We're just remembering what the properties are. Number 2, 3 to the negative 2 and 3 to the 5th. What do I get to do with my exponents? No, I'm going to add them together. I don't have to do that. Yeah, no, you're not an idiot. We don't have to, the negative, it makes you want to flip. But since they're being multiplied, I can just add them together. Because look, negative 2 plus 5 gives me a positive 3. Okay. So now I don't have to flip. If I would have put them together and, um, and it still was negative, then I would have flipped at the end. So when you, yeah, okay. When you but not yet. Them, yeah, yeah. yep. Three and four dividing, right? Mm -hmm. So what I get to do with my exponents there? Subtract. Subtract. So we always do the numerator minus the denominator. And today I'm standing here for you, babe, if you need me. Twelve minus four is? Eight. Eight. So this becomes three to the eighth. All right, and then number four, we're still subtracting. 3 minus negative 1 actually turns into 3 plus 1, so it becomes 4 to the 4th. And then last but not least, we have a power to a power. What, what, what am I going to do there? Multiply. So this becomes 7 raised to 3 times 5, which is 15. Okay. <clears throat> Today we're doing properties of logarithms. This is property of exponents. Do you think they're going to be connected? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Adding and multiplying are going to go together somehow with logs. Dividing and subtracting are going to go together somehow with logs. Okay? Power to a power and multiplying somehow going to happen again in logs. Okay? So when we do these property, properties today, remind yourself you kind of already know them. Okay? We're just going to apply it to logarithms instead. My last two are reminding how to rewrite. So I have log base x of x equals 1. How can I write that as an exponent? x to the power of 1 equals x. Remember yesterday we did that little e thing if you needed to? <clears throat> how about 7? Yeah, there you go. x to the power of 0 equals 1. These were the two special properties we saw yesterday, okay? If a log is equal to 1, that's because its base and its value are the same thing. If I get a base and a value of the same thing, I know it has to be equal to 1. If I have log of 1, it has to equal to 0 because anything to the exponent of 0 equals 1 every time. So no matter what the base is. So they were adding these up and stuff? So we're going to add, multiply, divide. We're going to do all kinds of fun stuff. Woohoo! I know, get excited. Each property I show you is going to have a word description, an algebraic description, and a number description. You can write all three. You can just pick one, okay? Whichever one works best for you. These are your notes, so pick what's going to work for you the best. So the first one we have is the product property, okay? My product property tells me that if I have a log together, that consists of two pieces being multiplied. I can separate or expand those pieces with addition. And each one gets their own log with the same base. And then vice versa. If, I, if I'm given two logs with, a, logs with a plus sign and it wants me to condense it into just one, I can take those values and multiply them together to give me just one log. So you'll hear condense and you'll hear expand a lot. Okay, so we're going to be able to go both ways. So condense is when there's only one log in your final piece. The expand is when you have multiple logs with the plus sign in it. Pick the one you like the best.
Okay, so for my first example, I have log base 6 of 4 plus log base 6 of 9. My directions, read them carefully. Express as a single logarithm, and then we're going to evaluate. So this actually has two pieces, okay? We have to express it as a single piece first. Then evaluate, which is what you did yesterday, where we find out what it equals, okay? So as a single log, I see two pieces at the same base. They're being added together, so to bring them together as 1, I can multiply 4 times 9. So this becomes log base 6 of 36. All right? I'm not done, though. That's not my full answer. It's half of my answer. The other part is evaluate. So log base 6 of 36 equals what value? A 2. Good. 6 raised to the power of 2 is 36. Okay, this is when we can use our calculator. Some of you can type it in the way you see it. Some of you um, have to use change of base. So you would have done log 36 over log 6, and it would give you 2. Okay. It's what this log equals. It equals the exponent. That's what we did in our homework yesterday. 6 raised to what is 36? 2. Okay. So when it says use mental math, that one's like a mental math problem. Sometimes you got to use calculators, do it. All right, my next one. Again, I see two pieces. They're being added together. So I'm going to bring them together as 1 with multiplication. So 625 times 25 gives me a nice large number. Who has it for me? Okay. All right, I have expressed it as a single log. Now let's evaluate. 5 raised to what power is 15, 625? 6? So again, change of base. You have done log of 15, 625 divided by log of 5, and that's where my 6 comes from. All right, you try the next one. So number six, there's an A and a B. They're all yours. You try number six. So like on part on 6A, I need to see you know how to multiply. But you know adding two logs together means I can bring them together with multiplication. So I need to see that this is log 8 of 64. I have to see that. Okay, That's the single log part. And then the evaluate part is when you tell me what it equals. So evaluate this equals 2. So that's what I would need to see on a quiz. Okay. My next piece, log 4 of 64 plus log 4 of 1024. Okay, so when I multiply those guys together, that's a nice number. What is that? 6, 5, 5, 3, 6. And when we evaluate it, what did you get? We got 8. Good. So I need the red and the blue that's in the box. We good? All right, my next one is quotient. We just did product. So what do you think quotient's going to have to deal with? Dividing. Dividing and? Subtracting. Subtracting, yes. Dividing and subtracting go together. So again, pick the piece that works for you. This is quotient property now. We are now starting at uh, the top of the page you picked up today when you walked in. Look for number seven. Number seven will show you which one is the top. So this one is telling me that if I have a log by itself and I have two numbers being divided, I can separate them with a minus sign this time, as long as each log has the same base. All right, so pick the one that works for you the best. Give you a second to write it down. All right, we're going to divide this time. So my first example here, we have log base 5 of 100 minus log base 5 of 4. Bring them together by dividing. So it becomes log base 5 of 100 divided by 4. 
Order, order matters. The first log is my numerator. The second log is my denominator. All right, so this gives me log base 5 of 25, which is going to equal what? Which is going to equal 2. Log base 7 of 49 minus log base 7 of 7. Okay, well that's going to give me log base 7 of 49 divided by 7 because 49 came first. So that turns into log base 7 of 7. There's one of my properties from yesterday. What does that have to equal? 1. 1. Good. All right, so you try 8. Try eight. All right, so are my problems correct? They're halfway correct. They're not done. What did I forget to do? Evaluate. You need both pieces. Okay? If you just have the number three or just have the number two, I just spit, I'm sorry, on your paper, you're wrong also. You're missing half of your answers. Okay? I need the logarithm by itself, and then I need to know, like, this one equals 3. Part B equals 2. Everything in the box is what I need. Okay? How we do on those? I saw good things. Good. Everything in the box. I need what's in the box. That is my answer. The red and the blue. Okay? Read your directions. If they just say condense or expand, if you just see one of those words then you don't have to do the evaluate part. But if it tells you to evaluate, do it. All right, our next pro uh, property is going to be the power property. Okay, so with this guy, if we have a power inside of my logarithm, I can actually move it to the front. So if I have a log base B of a value raised to a certain power, I can move it to the front of the entire log and multiply it, okay? My favorite description on this is the numbers. So see how it's log 10? I, please listen. It's log 10 to the power of 3. Well, since 10 is being cubed, 10 is being multiplied to itself three times. So I can make that log times 10 times 10 times 10. Product property tells me that becomes log 10 plus log 10 plus log 10. I have three log 10s. So that's why we're able to move the power to the front. Okay, because the power shows how many times that value is being multiplied to itself, all the logs. So the power gets moved to the front and we get to multiply it to the rest. All right, so with this guy, whoop, it is still a two-part question. It wants me to write it as a product first. That means move the power to the front. So this becomes 6 times log 2 of 8. So that's my product. And then it wants me to evaluate still. So I'm going to evaluate the log piece. Log 2 of 8 equals what? It's 3, right? 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So this is the same thing as saying 6 times 3, which equals 18. So again, I need the red and I need the blue. Okay, so when you evaluate, you still evaluate the log. You have to then multiply it by the power that you moved up front. Okay, part B, 20, power of 20, move it to the front. Here is my product. The product is 20 times log base 8 of 4. Okay? Evaluating, we have to evaluate log base 8 of 4. It's going to be a decimal or a fraction, and you will be okay. So log 4 over log 8 gives me what? Pretty sure it's 0. 0.66666. Yes, it's two thirds. Okay. If you didn't get two thirds, try again. 
log 4 divided by log 8, base bottom. Okay? Mul and it's the same thing as, like I said, 0.6 repeating. Multiply together. This gives me 40 over 3. Or you can say 13.3 repeating. You can leave it as a fraction. You can give me a decimal. I don't care. Log base 8 of 4. I evaluated my log. You have to evaluate your log and then multiply it with your power. 13 to 1 third. Yep, same thing. Mm -hmm. So to evaluate, we did the change of base. Log of 4 divided by log of 8. That's where 2 thirds came from. Okay. All right, you try the next ones. Try 10. There's four of them there. You can do it. A and B are nice, pretty numbers. C, you'll get a decimal, and you'll be fine. You'll survive it. Okay? So you do those guys. All right. Check your answers with mine, please. Check your answers with mine. So it is the one. Um, you could have 4.5. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you rounded that last one, I think it could be 4.45, 4.5, depending on how you round it along the way. Mm. I would not, nope, there is no 4.2. There's not a way to get that. Which would be 4.4. Questions on any of these? I don't understand Which one? Did you get any of the other problems? The adding, the dividing, did you yeah, get any of those? Okay, so the only difference here is after we do that evaluate piece that we did on all the other ones, you're multiplying it by what the exponent, the power was in the beginning. So the power just gets moved to the front of my log. Like log base 5 of 2, a 25, we know that equals 2. But there was a power there, right? It was 25 squared. So since the square got moved to the front, we're going to do 2 times log base 5 of 25. So 2 times 2. So we just get the value of 4. This 2 right here. This 2 right here. Oh, wait for it. It might show up. Maybe not. So is it like this 5? Yeah, to get the decimal of 2.23, what happened is I took this piece, calculator, I did log 54, and I divided it by log of 6. And that's where the 2.23 came from. And then we just multiply it with the power out front. All right, last property is probably going to be your favorite property. It's my favorite property. Inverses. So I'm going to show you when you can. Shh, I'm going to show you when you can cancel things out. Okay. So my inverse properties. We can cancel things out if their bases are matching each other. Okay. So I, if I have a log of an exponent and they have the same base, those get to cancel out. Okay. If I have an exponential function and in that exponent I have a log of the same base. They get to cancel out, and whatever is left is going to fall down and be our answer. Oh, Please don't tell me to do that. So you have a log <laughs> of any base of an exponent with the same base, like the top one, the log 10 of 10 to the 7th. You're logging your bases. They run off into the sunset, sunset together and have a beautiful life. But 7 is left behind. 7 is our answer. All right? If it's 10 raised to the log 10 of 2, 10 log 10, I see two bases that are the same in a log. They run away together but two is left behind, okay? So inverses, we get to cross them out if their bases match up. Okay. So the two is the, the power of the 10 mm -hmm. in the power. Yep. All right. Yep. You got it? Okay.
The ten is the power of no. The two is the power of the ten in the palace. Yes. Yeah. So I know. I know what she's saying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So look at a log three of three to the power of eleven. So guess what? Log three of three is gone. We're left with eleven. All right, how about B? I don't see two bases there. Isn't that the same thing that was log 9 of 9 squared? So it equals 2? Yeah, that's why we're equaling 2. Magic. This last one, 5 log 5 of 10. Just 10, because 5 log 5 matches up. Just 10 is left over. I told you you'd like these. No, not really. Though. That's not the you try. <laughs> yes, you can do the you try. Log 10 of 0 0.9. Do I have two bases there? Yeah. Yes, I do. They're both 10. That's a common log, right? They're both base 10. Yep, so log 10 of 10 cancels out. It's just 0 0.9. Yeah. So my next one, 2 raised to log 2 of 8x. 2 log 2 is gone. 8x is left behind. Okay? That is really it for inverses. I rewrote it as 9 squared. So log 9 of 9 cancels out. 2 is left behind. Okay? But of course they can't all be this lovely and easy. I'm never going to give you just one property to work with. I got to put them together somehow so you know, I know it's, I know that you know what you're doing. So let's bring it together. We're going to condense two of them and then we're going to expand two of them. Multiple properties along the way. So my first one, it wants me to condense each logarithm uh, into a single log, meaning in the end I should only have one log in my answer. Okay? So what do you see between log 4 of 3 and log 4 of 6? A plus sign. So how am I going to combine 3 and 6? We're going to multiply. What do you see on the end? Minus. So what are you going to do with the 2? You're going to divide. So it becomes log base 4 of 3 times 6 and then divide by 2. To bring them all together, that plus means I can multiply them together. That minus means I have to divide it by 2. So that gives me what? Becomes 18 over 2. So this does become log base 4 of 9. It does not tell me to evaluate, so I'm done with this problem. The other ones told me to evaluate. This one does not. So I, it, it just wants the single log. That's all it wants. Okay. Yes, when you evaluate, there will be an equals. All right, so 14. I see a plus. I see a minus. I also see a 2 in front of the log, and I see variables, which means you can't use your calculator. So those of you who are very calculator dependent, I promise you, you'll have X's, Y's, Z's on your quiz, so I know that you know how to do these properties. True story. The first thing I'm going to do before I bring together anything else is I'm going to move this power of 2 back up to where it was. So I'm going to keep everything the same right now. And I'm going to move that 2 back to be the power of x. That's where it came from. So condensing, condensing means I bring the power back up. This is our condensed side. This is our expand side. Okay? From here... I need to squish them together. How are we going to put together 2 and y? Multiply. Multiply. Then how are we going to put the x squared? Divide. We will divide it. So 2 times y, divide by x squared. A single log. There's only one log in my answer. All right, so that's condensing, bringing them back together as one.
15 and 16, we are expanding. So I need to see the plus. I need to see the minus. I need to see my power out front. That's the expansion, okay? Log 3 of 4x to the 5th. How can I separate 4 and x to the 5th? I'm going to add them, right? Aren't 4 and x to the 5th being multiplied together? So to pull them apart, they each get their own log now with the adding in between them. We're not done, though, because I have a power. It needs to go in front, and it only goes in front of the log that has the x. So log 3 of 4 plus 5 times log base 3 of x. Like that. Yes. This is a huge part. This is one of like one of the main pieces of logarithms. This and solving. Your quiz is this and yesterday. That's your quiz. That's a lot. Okay. Sixteen. It looks so easy, doesn't it? It looks simple, but you're freaking out because you see a square root. You should not freak out because you see a square root because we know how to make square roots into exponents, don't we? We do. What's the power of this? My power is 1. My root is 2, right? It's a square root. So that's the same thing as having log base 5 of x to the 1 half. We know this. We've done this before. We know this. So now this is just a power problem. So my 1 half needs to get moved to the front times log base 5 of x. If it was a cube root, what's your power? One third. One third. You know how to do it. It's old news. Okay? You know how to do these. All right? Here are your homework problems. We are doing page 466. 9 through 37 odd. And then 39 through 44 all.